I think when we first looked at, we, we heard about CivTech from a friend who recommended that we should have a look at the, uh, the competitions. What we found when we first looked at it was that it didn't look too onerous, which I think for us as a, a sort of a formative enterprise was, was quite important. So there wasn't too much ass in terms of uh, the, the entry. So it was a good idea that you had to explain a thousand words. Uh, we found that there wasn't too much asked about uh, sort of past sort of business sort of performance and delivery, which we thought made it accessible. Uh, we really liked the way the SevTech team came across in the, uh, the the videos, which we thought was really appealing. They, they came across as really approachable. So I think the whole sort of combination of factors made us think that even though we're not an established business, we can actually have a have a proper go at this, and it would be the the something that we would be. Uh, appropriate for. There's, n there's no barriers to what you can try to solve and I think a lot of good ideas come from people that maybe don't work within a certain area so if you've got a great idea about the field is maybe not your idea, uh, ideal area or the area that you're in then, then I think feel free to enter because I think you'll get a fair hearing for it. So I think we've, we've kind of proven that the, 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 the process is open and it's really about the, the, the good ideas that get through. We kind of took a, a sort of a, a numbers game approach to entering. So we found, uh, we looked at all the challenges and we thought four were really interesting. So we spent a little bit of time as a team to actually come up with uh, what we thought were nice solutions to the problems. We didn't expect to get more through in more than maybe one or two if we were really, really l lucky. So we're really surprised to find out that we actually got down to the last three on three of the challenges. But I'm sure surprised people at CivTech too. <laughs> we were really lucky to get through an A9 tourism challenge, which I think appealed the most to us as a team. So it really fitted into our past experience of uh, mobile web development and working with databases. Uh, I think it was probably the most appropriate one to get through for us. And it's the one as a team that we're really the, the keenest to work on because it's really nice to work with really beautiful material such as, you know, travelling around Scotland. And I think it really pulled out the key strengths of the team. I think the exploration stage is, is quite a key section because I think it's really when you start to test, you, you, you'll, you'll get to meet your uh, prospective uh, sponsors and that's great to actually get the first connections with them, uh, but you'll start to learn the, the truth behind the, the, the challenge, so you get a lot more detail, and that allows you to really sort of uh, almost solidify your response, and I think you should use that time to strengthen up your original entry, so if your entry at the beginning is the same at the end of the exploration stage, you've maybe not asked enough questions, I would suggest that you actually go and physically meet the, the, the challenge sponsor and their people because that just allows you to get a personal connection and allows you to get more information and more help. So I think you've got to use that period to, to, to basically strengthen up your, your idea as much as possible. From the very first time we met them and their, uh, the consultancies that support them in delivering the A9, they were incredibly helpful. So they've opened a lot of doors for us, uh, whether it be through meetings with Visit Scotland, the HES, they, they brought us into the almost the, 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 the wider tourism team. So there's, a, I think, probably every few months there's a meet-up with all the different parties involved in A9 dueling. So you're meeting people from the councils, from Visit Scotland, from a Historic Environment Scotland, to a whole, a whole, the whole broad array of a, organisations together. I think because we were seen as part of a team with Transport Scotland, it, it just got gained a lot of support and a lot of high level contacts that we wouldn't have had otherwise. We've had a, a great well a great amount of support from Visit Scotland in terms of other routes to consider because I think for them discovering the hidden gems and a uh, a uh, sort of travel road routes are becoming important parts of the, the experience they give to visitors. Well I think the accelerator is a uh, you need you get back what you you put in. So I think it's the, the the commitment that you make to always be at the. I think everything has a, a purpose. All the different workshops, all the presentations. A lot of people are giving up a lot of time, and if you kind of reciprocate that by turning up, you'll get the most from it. There's certain uh, things that I wasn't quite sure that we needed to go along to, but I actually got a lot from them. 
And I think the important thing is, even if you know about a certain area, you can actually contribute, because a lot of the accelerator uh, uh, workshops are group experiences. So just by you being there as part of the cohort and sharing your experiences, you can actually improve the experience for the other people in the room. I think it's almost the, the way, quite at the very early stages, the way we entered the competition, i.e. covering our odds, covering our bases, having multiple looking for multiple projects. I think it was it was almost like a reality check when we became part of the program because there's quite an onus on a uh, you know spending time with the challenge sponsor, spending time with the citizens. You've got uh, meetings with uh, various consultants coming in to advise on different aspects of running your own startup. So from that we realized that this is really something you can only focus on one thing and I think there's a beauty in just focusing on one thing because you get so much deeper into the project so you know you get much deeper connections with uh, with the, uh, the sort of target audiences that you'll be working with. I think almost by kind of us doing the right thing and trying to uh, enrich the you know the, the rural communities that do need a lot of help in tourism and help to promote themselves that there was a lot of support and it was actually not just a three-month project that support goes beyond that so I think it was it was almost uh, just the you know the signs of support the signs of comfort the the connections we were making the, the, the traction we could see within the product uh, not just from the kind of development and building of the product but the relationships that were putting around the product and when we started to get a feel for the strength of that I think that was the kind of the, the switch point that we had the confidence that to put, put all the eggs into one basket it's actually the best thing to do, which it is a scary step, but I think just the feel of uh, the momentum behind the project and the meeting the people and getting to know the people that were around it gave us the confidence to actually take that step. Yeah, Demo Day was is, is one of these things in the calendar that's quite frightening. It seems quite far away at the beginning because it's, it's, you've got uh, uh, 90 days or 100 days to go. Uh, then it goes down to 79, 78 and it gets closer and closer. And I think there's a... a, a it's one of these things that I think is a really good thing because it gives you so much momentum into your project because you need to have your working MVP. You need to be able to show people. You need to... Uh, and also you, you need to present to a big room of people about the, the potential of your product and how it's solving the, 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 the problem. So I think it's a, it's a big build up but I think in a lot of ways it was great experience to learn how to present to a big group. Uh, you get a huge amount of support in the run up to it so it's not suddenly like the next day you've got this big uh, demo day presentation in front of hundreds of people. You've actually got like a, a good, I would say three, four week build to get you into shape so you can actually present well in front of everyone, which I think all the teams uh, that are part of the Accelerator really appreciated. Uh, and I think it's part of almost like a bonding experience between everyone as we all help to strengthen, you know, the, the proposition that we take to that big room full of people. Right now we've got a couple of, we've, we've successfully demoed the app, we're, we're quite happy with it, we're testing it on a weekly basis up and down the A9. So I think within the next few weeks we'll have a, a set time for launching the Android version. Uh, we need to plan for a big launch in June, which will be the full public launch, in which we'll use PR and we'll work with a lot of the, the bodies involved in the, the A9 project. The velocity of what we achieved in that time, I probably wouldn't have thought was possible uh, in a sort of previous life. But if everyone's committed to the, the project and putting the time in, then it's amazing what you can create.